So I'm here trying to help you guys. I'm here trying to help anybody who is thinking about buying an RV. <laughs> My channel's not that big, so I, I doubt very seriously this video will get that many views. So one thing led to another. We finally got another call from Thor Motor Coach, and they were they were actually at by this point Thor Motor Coach was extremely disappointed in how everything with this situation had went. I mean, actually, I think by this point, Thor Motor Coach and Camping World, they had actually started being a little empathetic. I kid you not. I, I think everybody had had enough. I'd had enough, they'd had enough, and I think they realized that I was making everybody's life a living H-E double hockey sticks because I, I did not lawyer up. And I, I really think they were afraid I was gonna lawyer up, and I never did because I had talked to a lot of people and a lot of people said, all you're gonna do is spend money on an attorney and nobody's gonna be able to help you. You're not gonna be able to talk to Thor Motor Coach. You're not gonna be able to talk to Camping World. You know, they're your friends. They're the only ones who can help you with this problem. I even talked to the bank. They couldn't help. Oh man, it gets better. So Thor Motor Coach finally said, look, here's what we're gonna do. By this time, I realized Thor Motor Coach had in their power, and they do, I think they still do this day, but they have in their power to make you happy or to make you dissatisfied. It is completely in their court if you buy a Thor Motor Coach. Thor Motor Coach decided to upgrade us from a Palazzo 33.2 to a Palazzo 33.5. And I'm like, what's the, what's the catch? They said, there's no catch. They said, well, we're gonna pay you to come to the service center in Indiana at the Thor factory to pick up your motor home and you can drive it home yourself. We'll give you as much time as you need to go through that motor home with our techs to make sure it is in perfect condition. I had in my mind the whole time I was going to get them to, to buy this RV back. I mean, Camping World was not going to buy that motorhome back. They made that very clear to me when I was talking to the general manager of Camping World. They told me that they do not stay in business by buying RVs back. I get it. They're in business to sell RVs. They are not in business to buy them back. So if you think they're going to buy one back when you're having problems, no. Nah. That's not gonna happen. So I went up to Indiana to pick up a brand new 35.1 Palazzo. I spent an entire day going through that motorhome with a senior tech in their service center. There's a few little things I found that were wrong. They fixed everything that I requested them to, to fix within two days. So I drove that motorhome from Indiana to North Carolina in, I believe it was April or May of 2014. Didn't have any problems driving the motor home back to North Carolina. I just wasn't used to driving in the high winds going, you know, going across the flatlands up there, you know, where there's no trees like there are here in North Carolina, but the wind was terrible. And even though I had pulled fifth wheels and, you know, big dually trucks and everything, that was a new ball game for me. I was, I was not ready for that. So I made it home with the Palazzo and the next day it rained cats and dogs here at home. We got so much rain, it turned our yard into a pond. I mean, it, it rained and it rained and it rained. But at the time I didn't have a barn where I could store my motorhome inside it like I do now. Yep, guess what? It leaked, and it leaked a lot. Water leaked into to this motorhome on the driver's side. Water leaked all over the driver's side window, down the wall, into the Allison transmission controls, into the leveling jack controls. It was a mess. So there I was again on the phone with Thor Motor Coach. Well, this time Thor Motor Coach said, we're gonna send a tech to your house. Where do you live? He'll be there in two days. So sure enough, two days later, a Thor Motor Coach tech showed up in his rental car 
and all his parts and pieces. He got on the roof of the motorhome. He took some Dicor self-leveling sealant, threw it up there. That stopped the leak. About three weeks later, we were on a camping trip. The large slide out, which is right there, failed just like the first one did. Schwintec failed on a replacement motor home Thor Motor Coach had upgraded me to. I was on the phone with Thor Motor Coach again. And I said, here's the deal. This slide out has failed just like the first one did. What are y'all gonna do about it? So they decided to send two techs back to North Carolina. This time they weren't gonna come to my house. I guess they needed a shop environment. So they decided to send the two techs to the camping world. And I had an appointment to take my motor home to the camping world, the replacement motor home, the upgraded motor home, the nice shiny new motor home I just drove from Indiana. I spent a whole day at the camping world because I wasn't about to leave it. I was not about to leave the motorhome and not watch what they do because I was at the point to where I was thinking in my mind, hey, look, I, I'm not getting out of this motorhome now. I mean, they've, they've replaced it. They've shown some good faith. I'm going to have to deal with the cards I've been dealt. I'm going to have to lay in my bed. So the techs upgraded this large slide out right here to what they call a triple rail Schwintec system. That means there's two rails on top and one rail still on the bottom. The two rails on the top are meant to support the weight of this large slide out. I am now 10 years into this 35.1 Thor Motor Coach Palazzo and that slide out has not failed since they upgraded it to a triple rail, a triple rail Schwintec. Am I concerned every time I run it in and out? Yeah, you better believe it, I am. I say a prayer every time I run that slide out out and bring it back in. There's a certain procedure you have to go through before you can operate that slide. And that procedure includes making sure your motorhome is on its leveling jacks and don't even think about moving the slide until you're leveled out. So I do that every time before I operate that large slide out. Over the years, I've done some self-maintenance to this large slide out which includes using lubricant because you're not supposed to put grease on these on these rails. That's a no-no. So I use the dry lube on these rails. And I also put some lubrication on the rubber seals. So that way the slide out can move freely. And also underneath this slide out are rollers. And I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of get into the roller situation here after I tell you what I do to these rollers. So I use the dry lube on the rollers on the bottom because that slide out sits, it sits on those rollers. The rollers is what is supposed to support the weight of the slide, not the rails, not the Schwintec system on each side. I don't know if they are to this day, but back in the day when these Palazzos and, and uh, even other manufacturers, but I know the Palazzos are highly susceptible to Schwintec failures, but the Palazzos were under engineered for these large slides. And what I mean by that is Thor Motor Coach did not use enough rollers on the floor to support the weight of that slide out. I think mine only has six. One, two, three, four, maybe five. There should be a minimum of eight to ten under that slide out. So that slide out has something, a firm foundation to sit on. I've heard of horror stories of water intrusion and the, and the rollers sinking down into the floor because they, they put them where there's not a structural member on the floor. The manufacturer does not put them in the proper place. There's other manufacturers like Berkshires, those motorhomes, they, they put a little more emphasis into the structural stability of those slide outs. So some other brands do not have that big of issue with a Schwintec slide out as Thor Motor Coach did and apparently still does. So here I am. 10 years later, I still own this motorhome. Owning an RV is what I like to call a reverse marriage <laughs> because the honeymoon phase is horrible. The honeymoon phase is the first couple of years where there's nothing but problems. There's nothing but heartaches. There's nothing but tears. It's just horror for the first couple of years of RV ownership. And I think motorhomes, more so than travel trailers, are more susceptible to all the issues you could possibly have with an RV because a motorhome has way many more components. You have the truck component, which is what the motorhome rides on, the chassis, the engine, steering, the brakes, the suspension, 
the engine. The rest of it is what we call the house. But I like to call it a reverse marriage because the beginning of that marriage, that relationship with an RV is a horror story in the beginning, for the most part. I mean, I'm sure there's some folks who've purchased an RV and just had a wonderful experience, but there's still a lot of people who do not have that wonderful experience. I hope current RV owners who've owned RVs for a long time can relate to this video. I hope those of you who are going through a lot of issues with your new RV, just know you're not alone. I can honestly say I've been through three of these before I got the one I ended up with and still had problems with the third one, just like I did with the first one. <laughs> and there's been many other problems with it since the first couple of years. But I think the one thing that I can say is that Thor Motor Coach wanted to help. And, and I think if I was to call them today for a problem, they'd want to help. If you get hold of the right person, they will genuinely want to help. Just a few years ago, well, it's been about five years. I mean, it's amazing how 10 years have flown by. But about five years ago, I had an issue with my driver's side window. The entire, the entire window was fogged over and you couldn't see out the thing. So I contacted Thor Motor Coach and I said, look, this is a safety hazard. And this, you know, this window has only lasted five years, what can you guys do? You know, I, I think it's a safety issue. You know, I really don't believe that I should pay to have a window fixed, you know, that's preventing me from driving the RV. You know, it's a safety issue. I can't see the, I can't see out. I can't see the side view mirror. They said, no problem. We'll send you a window. Where you want us to send it to? So they sent me a brand new window and that thing sit in the barn here for about a year before I had a chance to put it in because that window had gotten so bad. I, I literally could not see out the thing. So they sent me the window free of charge. So I guess the moral of the story is, if you want to buy a new RV, expect the unexpected. We expected perfection and we did not get perfection. Do not expect perfection if you go lay down half a million dollars, a million dollars, $250,000. Cheapest motor home right now, 150 grand. You're not going to get perfection. These things are a rolling earthquake. So if you got cracks in the sidewall, you got cracks in the roof, you got delamination, you got sidewalls coming off. Expect the unexpected. You're driving a house down the road. Things will fall apart. Things will break. It's the nature of the beast. I think the misconception is, is that people think RVs are built like a car. No, they're not. Th these are not built like a car. They're built more like, these things are built more like your house that they put on wheels and you drive it down the road. <laughs> That's how these things are built. They are not built like a car, an automobile that is made to go down the road and be beat up and not fall apart. These motorhomes are not built that way. They are built like your house, which is on a solid foundation and it's not meant to be moved. But RVs, motorhomes, class A's, Class B's, Class C's are built on a truck chassis and the truck chassis may be able to withstand the rigors of going down the road, but the rest of it, no, not really. It's, it's a work in progress to fix the house portion and make sure it stays intact going down the road. So I think that's the biggest misconception people have about these RVs. There are, the house portion, there are some aspects of it that are, that are made to withstand the road. I mean, obviously the windshields and the you know, the, the lights, you know, for safety, the mirrors, some of the windows. I mean, there, there's, there's issue with the windows falling out of these things, windows blowing out. So I, I can't even see, you know, windows fogging up. I, I couldn't even put the windows that are in these things in the category of being meant to go down the road every day. I, I guess the point I'm trying to make is if you, if you want to buy an RV, be ready for the unexpected. Be ready to spend your time and your resources to drive that RV, if it's able to drive under its own power, back to the manufacturer and be ready for it to be worked on to get fixed. Because I learned along the way, these dealers cannot fix these RVs. I don't care how good a dealer you are. They, they don't know what they're doing. They can't fix them. The only way they can be fixed, and then sometimes they still can't be fixed, is to take them back to the manufacturer. I think I would challenge these, if, if you have a massive issue with your RV, you know, as far as structural 
the house part falling apart, whatever, don't send it to the dealer. Work with the work with the manufacturer. Send it back to the manufacturer. You know, whether they come get it or whether you take it, you're gonna to have to spend your resources, your money, your time to get it there. It you know, depending on where you live in the country, and most RVs are built in Indiana, Midwest, some are in Tennessee, you know, some are in Montana. You may have to drive across the country to get your RV back to the manufacturer. So be ready for it. If you want to buy one of these, just be ready. But I, w I would challenge the manufacturer, if you have a major issue and they're willing to fix it, I would challenge them to see how they can make it better so that the same problem doesn't happen again. That's what you need to do. Because if you take it back and they put the same old fix on it, you're going to get it back and it's probably going to happen again if it's a major issue. So just be ready for the unexpected. And then you will have to gain the knowledge and the competency to fix things yourself. You will have to learn how to fix all the components and things that break yourself unless you just have boatloads of money and you can pay someone to fix them for you. But I don't think the vast majority of the RV in public is in that category. So I've owned this motorhome now for 10 years and I've spent those 10 years working on it. I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. We've used the RV, we enjoy the RV, and I'm at the point now to where I have worked on it so much and I've done so many mods to it, I've done so many upgrades to it, I've made so many fixes to it, I really don't want to get rid of it. But keep this in mind, when you do decide to get rid of it, you will most likely, from a financial aspect, lose a lot of money. I know this has been a long video, but I hope this helps anyone who's thinking about purchasing an RV, and I guess in my case a motorhome. It seems like the more expensive the RV got, the bigger the RV got, the more complexity the RV had in it, the more problems I got. If you stuck with me this long in this video, I really, really appreciate it. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. Please hit that like button. I've got RV content on my channel. I've got a lot of how-to videos on my channel, especially with working on this Palazzo. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's all I got. All right, let's go edit it and see how it turns out.